I could not have written Ready Player One if I had not grown up on a steady diet of Steven Spielberg movies. It would have been a different story or I might not have written it at all. His work is woven into the fabric of my life. Everybody, I think, who dreams of making movies dreams of getting to work with him. It's a dream come true. When I read Ready Player One, it was the most amazing flash forward and flash back at the same time. I was born in 2025, but I wish I'd grown up in the 1980s. Like Halliday and Morrow, like all my heroes. I suddenly saw a future that Ernest Cline, the writer of the book, envisioned. It wasn't that far away from what I think is going to happen someday. I live here in Columbus, Ohio. In 2045, Columbus is the fastest growing city on Earth. But it sure doesn't seem like it when you live in the stacks. There's a dystopian society, and the fabric of our economy is crumbling. It's a good time to escape, so virtual reality will be a super drug. They called our generation the missing millions. Missing not because we went anywhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere except the Oasis. I was very careful with Ernie collaborating with me every step of the way to be able to find the movie narrative inside this dense forest of Ernie's profound imagination. The Oasis being the ultimate toy box with all the toys in the world and then playing that with one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. It results in just amazing action and such a fun adventure. is such a visionary and I think has seen the future before any of us possibly could even imagine it. Hey everybody, so Steven Spielberg just dropped a brand new Ready Player One trailer, this time narrating a little bit about the creative process. You probably picked up on the fun that they were having with the new footage that they dropped. So obviously, new trailer, new footage. But Steven Spielberg was talking about Ernst Klein's mind as Wade was walking in to inspect Halliday's journals. So you see like this giant mind space that's organized like a library, meant as sort of a joke on Ernst Klein's imagination as he was coming up with Ready Player One. They prefaced it with that Steven Spielberg highlight reel. He actually said specifically, Steven Spielberg himself, that there was a real conversation they had about how much of his movies that they would let into this movie. Because obviously the whole book is all about 80s nostalgia. But Steven Spielberg is such a huge part of that that him working on the movie got to this really meta place like, wait a minute. We're basically remixing all of Steven Spielberg's movies, so they didn't want it to feel like it was overpowering the film. So if it feels like they went overboard on Spielberg, they actually held back quite a bit. And you also have to remember that because he's such a powerful producer, he gets an executive producer title on a lot of films that he doesn't actually direct himself. So when you think about it, there's not as much Steven Spielberg as you would think, because a lot of times on a lot of big projects like the Transformers franchise, he's really a producer in name only. He doesn't have a lot to do with what's going on with those movies. But just going through some of the other new footage, you get a better shot of some of the slums. Like they paint a picture of a future that Steven Spielberg says he actually thinks has a legitimate chance of happening, which is kind of depressing because it's so dystopian. But you see these drone shots, you see them slowly moving into the stacks. And the funny thing here, I could make all kinds of jokes because I went to college in Ohio and this looks a little bit nicer than the dorm I lived in. We get some better race scenes, more shots of the DeLorean. It feels very Speed Racer if you remember that movie with the colors toned down a little bit. Like a more dystopian version of Speed Racer without a lot of the affectation of that movie. I, you know, wonder how it'll be received because a lot of people have probably forgotten about that. So if you do have the chance to rewatch it before you watch Ready Player One, I recommend checking it out. 
And when you're thinking about the most famous cards of all time, yeah, you think DeLorean, you think Batmobile, which shows up in this scene here, but the Mach 5 has got to be on that list. So I'll be interested to see how much anime from the 80s makes it in here too. Because even though they're hyping up Iron Giant, just because that's a little more recent and a little more Western, you do see a Gundam in these big fight scenes here. So there is some anime in here, but I think for the most part, they try to keep it as contemporary as possible with exception for the really, really well-known pop culture from the 80s. But speaking of which, you walk into the Halliday Journal building here, look at the background in Diorama Hallway. It's all arcade games. So like you have to access memories by playing the arcade games. But different memories are tied to very specific video games, just depending on what the memory is. We get a little more of Artemis' character and then more of this big scene in the Oasis. The thing about this though is this is probably where you'll find the most number of Easter eggs, but they always hide stuff in the background. That's one of the things that you have to watch for when you've seen a movie three or four times is you look in the background and you'll find that a lot of the CG artists will bake stuff in. One of the best examples of that is if you go back and you rewatch the old Pixar films way before Disney ever bought Lucasfilm, they would bake R2-D2 into the background of certain shots. So you just have to imagine that scenes like this are that on steroids. But then you have a lot of the easy ones too, like you have Iron Giant, you have Tracer from Overwatch, you have Chun-Li from Street Fighter, you have the Gundam. I think so far some of the biggest changes, literally the biggest changes that people have spotted, are the Iron Giant swap for what seems like Ultraman by the end of the film, and the fact that Wade and Artemis know each other much earlier in the story, like they actually find out who each other are. In the book it didn't happen till later. There were a lot of critics after that first trailer came out that said that they were originally trying to do that to strengthen what they thought was a weak link during the book, but I think that just depends on how you feel about the book. And if you haven't read the book, I would recommend checking it out because it's actually pretty badass, or if you're a big fan of audiobooks, I think that Will Wheaton actually narrates it. But it's not a super long read, it's not like Game of Thrones long, and Ernst Klein did reveal that he was writing a sequel to the book, but he hasn't said a whole lot about it. He just revealed during a live stream that yes, I'm working on it, I can't say a whole lot about it. I think part of the idea with today's IP is that, you know, this is reinvigorating interest in his novel. Like, obviously it was already really popular, but movies that are popular always make the source material that much more popular. So he capitalizes on that by writing a new book, and the idea is that they would develop that into a sequel to this movie too, depending on what the story of the sequel is. But just let me know, what do you think of this trailer, and what do you think about the idea of a sequel book to Ready Player One? What would you actually want that to cover? Big news is, we might also get a Han Solo trailer next week. It's just a rumor, but there will be other Black Panther and Infinity War stuff dropping real soon, so be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. While you wait for everything, click here to watch the last big Ready Player One trailer and click here for brand new Infinity War. Thank you so much for watching, everybody stay awesome, I'll see you guys tonight.